Okay, welcome to uh, this short video on the uh, application of patellar tendon bearing cast or PTB cast, which we often use in the delayed phase of the fracture healing uh, for partial weight bearing. And uh, the material that are required for you know doing the uh, this plaster are obviously the cotton material, and you need water, ideally lukewarm water, and then you need various you know sizes of uh, uh, plaster of Paris and uh, you need the stockinette which is very important uh, where you apply PTB cast. So Sanjay our uh, senior technician uh, uh, will show the demonstrate how it is to be applied. Please go ahead. So here if you see the, the application of plaster the knee patient has to be relaxed and the knee has to be bent to around 10 to 15 degree and the ankle has to be at a neutral position supported by the thigh of the applicant and a stockinette uh, can be applied in this way all the way up here he has got a small wound on the medial side so we are taking a little bit of time so we will go all the up all the way up So, okay. so here actually if you see the uh, thing the, the plaster will actually go above the petala anteriorly and posteriorly it will be in such a way that when you bend the knee to 90 degree uh, the posterior part of the PTB will just start touching the posterior part of the thigh just above the, the crease of the knee. So, and uh, the, please go ahead. Now the cotton is applied from distally, ideally in a figure of eight manner. And then every plaster layer should cover one centimeter of the next uh, inner layer of cotton. And it goes up and uh, it crosses the patella anteriorly. It goes superior to the patella. And uh, yeah, now there will be an additional padding for the uh, you know the for the petal part yeah can you put it there and there's additional padding for the malleolus and the achilles tendon so it will go from posterior to anterior it's one layer, one big layer that covers the tendinitis, tendoachilis, lateral medullus, and medial medullus. Now you can apply the EOP. It will start from distal to proximal. Same in a figure of eight manner from the ankle. Leaving behind the metatarsal should be left behind open. A little bit further you can take behind here. So, and you can use a figure of eight here for securing the ankle is at neutral position yeah. so you need to go up we will do molding later on as uh, the plaster becomes uh, you know uh, sticky in the dowing phase now, the, as we go up, we have to be mindful that our plaster material the, does not, you know, go behind, beyond the knee crease, so that when the knee is bent to 90 degrees, it does not, you know, causes any irritation in the thigh when it's bent to 90 degrees. Now, this is the layer given. Uh, you can see that it starts from, uh, there's, you can strengthen that area entirely by multiple layering and uh, then again you take it down all the way and shape it in such a way that the anterior portion is much larger than the you know uh, and, and longer as compared to the posterior uh, part of the PT. So now just strengthening the other layer. This plaster also take care of the rotational stability. 
So that's why it is uh, uh, it has to be molded very well. So now the initial molding will be there. He will show how to mold the for the gastrocnemius, the two heads of gastrocnemius. He will mold. Okay, that completes the application of POP. Now comes the important step that is molding. So the first molding that we will do is molding of the gastrocnemius, the medial head and the lateral head of gastrocnemius. Yeah, we do one firm movement between the two heads of gastrocnemius, yes, strongly. Yeah. Then comes molding of the tibial upper tibia on both sides. So do molding of both sides, the tibia. Yeah. In one, 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 one movement you can do. Now come to molding of patella and quadriceps. You can push the patella from above gently and stabilize the patella from below using both hands and uh, shape both the patella from lateral and medial side also using the thumb and the and the index finger that comes close in contact. So if I can demonstrate here in this uh, bone sample, here you need to mold both side here as well as on the lateral side and also push the patella from above and do a molding using your thumb and the index finger as the meat arrives. Right, so now this is the stage now we have to fold the stockinette from above. Yeah, molding is over now. Now stockinette needs to be folded down and at this stage we will have to cross check whether when the knee is bent at 90 degree there is any irritation posteriorly. Moreover, so he seems to be comfortable, yeah, any sharp point behind you have to mold it before the plaster becomes hard. Now distally also same thing you now apply the second layer of uh, POP to cover this part. Okay. Go ahead. Now you need the POP to cover the stockinet, the loose ends, which will also strengthen kind of the proximal end. Okay, that's great. Now after this is complete, we are going to do the same thing distally, expose the metatarsal as much as possible and uh, apply the sealing plaster. All of you can help me with the other material for him. Yeah. We have to do molding of the milioli. Just show the molding of the milieu line, which probably you can do even before this step. That will be more appropriate to mold. As you mold proximally, you can also mold distally at the same time, which will be more appropriate here. The plaster is slightly harder in our case, but this should be done simultaneously as you go proximal. The same time you do, uh, you know, molding of the milieu line as well as the the tendo Achilles. So in, in case uh, you want the patient to walk, you can put a you know, rubber uh, uh, in sole. Uh, the point is that when you put the rubber in sole, it is important to align that rubber in sole very well to the long axis of the tibia. And uh, here you can see the tibial tuberosity and the second toe. They has to be in the same line when you apply so that uh, you know you are rotationally you are correct. So 
this is in short how you should apply uh, POP, uh, the PTB type of cast, in particularly for management of TBR fractures. When you want the patient to bear weight, you can see the little bit of you know, indentation here, showing a good molding there, and uh, distally as well. This uh, The distal part here looks a little wider, because in this case we have to put a, a bandage material because he has got a small wound. So with this we thank uh, all of you for your patient hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Mandip Thillo, sir, for giving this opportunity to explain how PTB plaster has to apply.